Welcome to another episode of Ozfish. Davey, let's get some. <laughs> Never know what you're going to catch when you're drifting with a bait jig, yeah? Tiny little beautiful snapper. Right out in about 72 feet, you know? Yeah, I, lo I love coming out in the ocean bait jigging, you know, like... But, uh, I'll get him back. Yeah, guys often ask me, you know, like, uh, when they watch my videos and that, you know, why I, uh, I go out and, uh, in the ocean catching my live baits, and, um, number one is, I love being in the ocean. And, uh, number two is, you know, like, uh, when you've got a bait jig out, um, particularly as you drift out to 65, 70, 70, 75 feet, uh, catching live bait, you know, you catch, like, bream and you catch, like, squire, um, you know, like all sorts of stuff, you know, like um, sometimes bonito and things like that. Um, so that's why I love coming out in the ocean. Another reason why is because in the Hunter River there, it's susceptible to like, um, you know, sometimes the water's really dirty, you'll get rain. It kind of puts the bait fish off around the end of the breakwater and around the, um, you know, the, the navigation lights. Even when you get really big swells and that, you know, like... Um, you know, for days after, it's hard to catch bait out there because of all the sediments in the water. So it, uh, but when you come out in the ocean, particularly as you come south out of Newcastle, you know, the um, it recovers pretty quick. The water's usually pretty uh, pretty clean and, um, yeah, so you can always sort of get live bait. And um, to me, man, you know, like, it's just like being in the ocean. You know, like, it's more exciting, a little bit more fun. Um, you know, you get more different species and, um, yeah, that's why I come out in the ocean. Just love being in the ocean, man. That's why I like it. What I do with my bait jig as well is, you know, like, uh, I only ever use, like, a maximum of three droppers, you know, on my bait jig when I'm catching bait, but um, I've actually uh, busted the uh, the bottom one off. In the last two days, I've actually just been using uh, two droppers, and um, even two droppers is, like, really effective, you know, like, you just don't get any tangles, it's just hassle-free, you know, like, Get big yakkers, you know, well spread apart on your droppers, and yeah, that's that's what works for me, you know. Like uh, too many droppers, and you know, like um, yeah, too many tangles, you know, particularly on big yellowtail and that, you know, like. But, uh, you can see even with just like uh, even with two droppers, the fish is straight on you, you know, like. Catching the uh, the live bait on these um, where I'm fishing are just huge ledges. It's just a gigantic big ledge uh, that comes out here and drops away from um, you know 32 feet and it just drops on these big ledges. You know, like and um, what happens is the bait they're uh, they're just stacked on on, on this uh, big ledge here. You know, and um, yeah, it's. Um, also, you know, it's, a, it's an awesome spot for Brim, Snapper, Squire, you know, even Jew running along it, you know, like, um, the, uh, the fish love that big ledge. No matter what fish you're chasing, they love the big ledges. Probably to do with current upwellings, you know, like, um, everything's there for them, you know. All the little, you know, phytoplankton and that, I guess, that the other uh, bait fish are fishing on. And, uh, yellow tail and 75 feet. You know, I'm, like I've, I've explained before, you know, like, I'm letting it drop down through the water column and grabbing my braid and, um, you know, having it sort of just, like, fall down in a staggered fashion or... You get out here really wide, the bottom's just a little bit more forgiving than it was, and um, can get right down to the bottom. See, I'm on the bottom there. You can just twitch, twitch, twitch with your sinker run along the bottom, and when the bottom's forgiven enough, yeah, you'll catch a yellow tail like that. It's kind of like two cool methods. One, stag and drop, and uh, the other one's letting it drop all the way to the bottom. If you don't get any, Letting, letting the sinker hit the bottom and, and just, you know, like shaking it along the bottom. Uh, that's quite often where you pick up your brim and your squire as well, you know, them other species, you know, like... Bait will be out really wide, you know, right out 80 feet beyond. Sometimes out wide you'll get that big horse yellow tail. 
I'm out dew fishing uh, this afternoon. It's been really windy uh, early on, but it's, uh, it's really sort of calming down now. So uh, about five o'clock in the afternoon and um, low tide, bottom of the tide is about eight o'clock tonight. So about three hours to go. So uh, yeah, I've been outside and um, yeah, had a good time. Just cruised around, caught some liveys, some big ones, uh, some small ones. And uh, yeah, I've come in the river and sort of uh, anchored up. So um, yeah, the tide's um, running uh, pretty hard at the moment. So when the tide's running hard when I'm dew fishing, what I love to do is actually love to fish with four rods out. So what I reckon is that like when you're live baiting with all live baits out, um, yeah, the more live baits you got out, the better. So I've got four liveys out there all swimming, um, all putting vibrations um, out in the water. And uh, yeah, I've got those four rods sort of like spread out um, off the back of the boat. And um, you know, like uh, any fish that are sort of living on the rock walls, you know, like uh, I'm hoping that they're gonna de um, detect those um, vibrations uh, in the water on their lateral line and sort of cruise out and um, you know, like um, have a look, hopefully get a fish or if a fish is kind of like, you know, just traveling down the river there. Um, yeah, it's a good chance he's gonna um, pick up those uh, vibrations of those four live baits. And, um, cruise on in for a look so um, yeah I was actually out yesterday afternoon and um, yeah never caught a fish uh, yesterday afternoon um, all I caught was one eel and um, I fished till about uh, 9.30 last night um, but yeah like um, with all dew fishing you know like uh, the idea is that um, you're not going to catch them um, all the time you're not going to catch dew every trip you know, like no way so um, the important thing is to um, yeah just um, Keep coming back man you know like um work out you know like um you know the simple routine that you're going to employ when you're fishing catching your live is the rod you're going to like, use and how you're going to rig them and um yeah basically just uh come back keep putting them live baits out keep fishing keep persistent and um eventually you'll catch yeah what happens with dew fishing is that um you know you're fishing around in different parts of the river and um sometimes you get lucky you know sometimes um you're dew fishing and um there's, uh, there's fish, you know, like um, in that part of the system that you've decided to uh, fish. And um, other times you come back, you know, and um, yeah, you'll, you'll fish a whole week, fish hard in the same sort of spot and you won't catch a fish. But, um, there's one thing you've got to remember in the Hunter River, which is different to Lake Macquarie, is that um, you have to compete with the professional fishermen um, in the Hunter River. And they take on average probably about six tonne of dew a year um, out of the Hunter River which is a lot of dew and um, in the areas that um, I'm kind of fishing in the pro fishermen um, they fish this area heavily of a night so what happens is when you're sleeping when you're at home dribbling on the pillow mate these boys are working you know they'll work from like they'll start working at you know seven eight o'clock at night mate and they will not stop until daylight and um, they run these big dew nets you know big heavy anchors on them what they do is they drop one end of that net they sink it down low on the water column, run it out and drop another big heavy anchor on the uh, on the other end. And um, yeah, they'll, uh, in the areas I'm fishing here, man, they'll run big nets down here. They'll run big, huge nets. I'm out here, they'll run big, huge dew nets up the river, up this way. And um, so yeah, like um, sometimes what happens is um, you wonder why you're on the dew really good and you've got these purple patches going for like, man, you'll be on the dew for like, three weeks you're thinking man you know I'm a legend and all of a sudden you know the area that you're fishing just goes dead for like two or three weeks and I don't know I could be wrong but sometimes I think what happens is that um them pros you know they're they're cleaning up them um them fish of the night any any you know resident fish in the area any fish that are living in this area mate while they're out you know like cruising around hunting mate them boys are like they're hitting them in their nets and sometimes them pros mate they'll get big shots you know, an average night for them, you know, three or four boxes of dew, just an average night for a pro in this area here, you know. And some nights, mate, they'll almost sink their boats when they're meshing. And sometimes they'll have to ring their brothers up and get another boat, you know, like to come and take some of the load of dew. So, uh, yeah, man, right or wrong, you know, that's what you're competing with. You now, we're just amateurs, man. We're just, we're just out here fishing for fun. You know, like, we're not trying to feed our family or make a living, so... Um, you know, all's fair in love and war, I guess. But, you know, like, um, they do take a very, very, uh, you know, heavy toll on the juice rocks in the, uh, the Hunter River. So, uh, anyway. Anyway.
Well, there you go. Double hookup. Do smash me on this rod. Got a mega strike on this rod. So I got two fish on. Anyway, with circle looks, sometimes you don't really have to worry, I guess, but I've got him on that rod and this rod. Booyah! I want this fish to go around the anchor rope. Unbelievable. Two fish must have swam down the river as a pair and just picked me up. Oh, well. Let's drop that fish out of the way and see how well a circle hook works on the other one. See if I've still got this fish. Oh, how arse is that? Still got this fish with the circle look. This fish actually slammed me really hard. Oh, he's lively. Oh, yeah. There's that second fish, yeah? Beautiful. But well, yeah, double hook up, baby. And those circle hooks are epic, mate. That's what allowed me to catch that fish. One on, hooked him, never touched the rod. There you go. Epic. Double hook up, yeah? Jew and Jew. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, baby. Ooh, -hoo, let's get him back. Fish number one. A little bigger. Okay, yeah, that fish is 80, as 89. Nice. And that fish. It's 81. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Ready to go. Ready to go. Man, that's what dew fishing is all about. You know, like, um, I fished yesterday. No fish, one eel. <clears throat> I came out today and, um, mate, I started fishing at 4 o'clock. 
and it's right on the bottom of the tide about 8.15 at night and hadn't seen a fish for like four hours and about 15 minutes. And I was just about to pull the pin, promised me, promised me Mrs. Mate I'd pull the pin at like 8.15, around about 13 minutes past eight, crunch, one rod has gone off and mate, within 10 seconds, the second rod is just slammed in the in the uh, in the rod holder but um with the circle hooks they're incredible once a circle hook goes in and hooks in the corner of the mouth and both those fish were hooked in the corner of the mouth mate you just you just fight one fish don't even worry about the second rod don't even touch it once that hooks in it's very hard for it to come out that fish just swam around 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 until i'd landed that uh first fish picked up the rod there he was so um yeah like uh i'm stoked you know like um you know, I fished hard for two days and uh, I've got the rewards and that's what uh, Jew Fishing's all about. So anyway, gonna go home, try to be on time for my wife, because I love her. And she got up me for taking the dolphin torch tonight. Sorry, darling. The lot of me GoPro broke, you know, like, but uh, anyway, I'll make it up to you. So um, this is Ozfish signing off on an epic episode. Till next time.